Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fallout Roundtable. This is a place where diverse individuals discuss various topics from the Fallout universe. Join us, the conversation has already started. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fallout Roundtable. I'll be your host today, Patrick Conway, also known in other circles as Jaxus. I'm here with my major host down there, Maverick, and we're also here with Gingerino. Today we're going to be talking about the different games that we could cross, like feed through, what's the word I'm looking for? Cross pollinate, cross whatever you want to call it. Yeah, uh, cross, not cross play. I don't know what you're talking. They, let's mix them together and they make a baby. Mix them. Sm- yeah, sm- a blender. <laughs> one of these. Smash them together and make babies. There okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to smash two games together and make babies. So we're going to grab Fallout and then we're going to grab a game of our choice and we're going to put them together and we're going to explain how they're going to work. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let the chaos begin. So who wants to go ahead and start? Hmm? Before we start, though, if you like our shenanigans, be sure to follow and rate, review, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at FollowRTB. Send us an email at, well, not at, at, but at AT, FalloutRTB at gmail.com. I do the same thing. I, I do the at, at thing. I can't stop myself. This is how it, it happens. You know, it just happens. Yeah. What I do is I try to change it where I would say something like using the email. And then uh, I still screw it up and I'll say at at. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Gingerin, are you talking? In, uh, uh, you, you muted yourself. I, ha- you? I have pushed yeah, to talk yeah. because I'm on baby duty. So <laughs> unless you want to hear all the noises he makes. Okay, <laughs> well, those are a lot happier than the ones he's making at the moment for some reason. Anybody? He's grumpy pants. He's a little grumper. Puss. Sure, he didn't have a bomb in there. <laughs> no, he just wants his mama. She's out at work, though. So, like I said, we are doing a thing where we're mashing up uh, Fallout with other games. Um, I hope you guys. Babies. Yes, we're making baby games. Yeah. Um, so. Have you guys thought about this? You know, did you guys put this together? Or you just kind of. I actually did. Up? I actually did because I thought it was a great idea when we thought of it last week. <laughs> or, awesome. Or at, at the recording, at the time of recording last week. Okay. Yeah. I have to say that because because Sassy Lady is like no one will understand that, but but I I love you, Sassy Lady, and I understand what what you're trying to say. Did he just say trying to stay? I think he did. Yeah. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yes. I. I Probably la, 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 la. <laughs> it happens. Okay, yeah. it happens to people mm-hmm. when it, we're trying to talk fast because you're just giving that vibe and energy today, and I don't know how how to take it. It's too much. Am I have have I had too much coffee? Am I too awake? Am I going too fast? I I I, I think you you had a little bit of coffee, but but that's beside the point. Let's get back to the topic at hand here. Okay, so um. Well, if you got something, go ahead and let 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 it rip. I had so so I'm a big Lego fan, but I I don't know if people would actually buy this game. If Lego we, Fallout, a hundred percent, I would. Yeah, buy that. Lego Fallout have a Fallout game made of Lego or or like Legos, you, you know, like Lego Star Wars, how they have the hubs and uh, where you choose levels and then go from there. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mo- mo- most people do. Most people have played the Lego Star Wars games. It's a classic game. It's a classic Lego franchise. My kids but love the Jurassic Park ones, but yeah. I have the Jurassic Park one also. It's awesome. But anyway, anyway, my idea for Fallout was to do a Lego do a Lego version, but ha- instead of all the hubs and the levels, make it open world sourced. But still have like the hearts in the corner, the studs. I, I I feel like they did something like this in Indi- Lego Indiana Jones, the third one, I think, when they included the the temple of no no it was the crystal skull or whatever, and they tried to do it, and it, it to me I I liked it because I'm a Lego fan through and through, but <laughs> looking back. Look, looking back, it sort of was cheesy, you know. But with a Lego Fallout game, you'd have to be a little bit more serious. I wonder how dark it, they would be being a Lego game. You know what I mean? Like, would they yeah. have to? Because, because I, I remember you had your other uh, 
idea for a show. I believe it was something about uh, taking the blood and the blood and stuff out of like Fallout. Well, I think with a Lego game, they'd kind of have to a little bit to, if they were going to mean, stick with the maybe. age theme, you know? I, I feel like they would, but yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I, I feel like they would they'd make it more funny, though. That That's their thing is making stuff more funny. I mean, like, like during more serious parts of, of uh, in sequences and stuff. They're making we're making follow babies, so there can there can be uh compromises. Plus, are compromising? also, what are we compromising here on the blood on the blood and guts for that? Plus, I mean, right. you could have the blood just show up as red Lego bricks, which is you know that's just red <laughs> Lego bricks. Yeah, kids, kids yeah, don't can't. know what that is, right? <laughs> it's just a red Lego brick, mommy. But but all of us older ki- all of us older people are like, oh, we know what that is, and you you are too young to know what that is. Um, fun fact: there is already a fan made Lego Fallout. I don't know much about it because I don't uh? have. It. You can find Where? it on, on itch.io. Um, oh, it's one of it's, those IO games. Yeah, uh, I don't know anything about it because my PC is not beefy enough to run it it's like surprisingly <laughs> needy but uh there you go i think it's fallout 4 oh i see it so how I would the mechanics it. work on that so you know I what i mean like uh, would know. you would you like make it like kind of where it uh like most of the lego games it kind of lead you along and you got to follow you got to like complete little puzzle quest kind of thing to be able to continue forward and then they just create one of the storylines put it together like maybe have a uh brotherhood of steel guy um running around trying to take care of modus maybe or have it where there's you know something like along those lines i feel i feel like they would do something like that and then they would just like in the fallout games they would have little side quests where you wouldn't there there's like a main way like ghost bricks like ghost studs like they do to get to the next level or whatever in the newer games they have stuff like that <laughs> be, be, because the maps are bigger because the consoles can handle bigger maps shocker mm-hmm. but but my i i would think they would still have that but but you know like in fallout 4 you, you can build in fallout 4 i don't know how you would build in lego fallout but i feel like it'd be like the same concept like it would be like a pre-driven thing but alongside that, I think they would also do like you would have your main quest, the the gray studs, and then I think they would have like little ghost studs going on on mini quests outside and stuff like that. Hmm. I can buy it. I, I'd buy as it. As you can see, I am a Lego game connoisseur. I'd like uh, to say that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a Lego guy. It's- per se but like my kids like to play lego stuff so if they were to buy a a lego fallout game i definitely would i I just like with the jurassic park one i sat there and i played it with them and we had fun Um, it's such a good co-op for kids and adults to go in and you know that's a good way to introduce your kids into fallout so come on bethesda let's get on this (laughs) oh also guys think about it for a minute how would you do the vat system may not even need the vat system i don't think you would even need it because I so even though you're integrating uh you know one game into the other game, you're taking the concept of Fallout and flipping it on its head and putting it into the Lego element universe. So you'd use the Lego's game style p- play with the um story and the art of a Fallout. So that's how that mesh would work. If you were to like try to mix uh, other game mechanics, and you may run into more problems than you would solutions. I I I feel the same way, but I was looking. I, I Gingerino was saying, "Oh, there's a Lego Fallout game, fan made," and I actually looked it up and I found it. But yeah, there there's also the thing like, what would you do for a Pit Boy? Like choosing all. Would would you have that? Would we still have that Pit Boy where we could choose our weapons from there? Our clothing. What would there be different clothing? How would you do that? Or, or would you just stick with stick with just the same thing? I would think it aesthetically would look the same. And then, like, just like your, let's say you're going into your options screen to pick your weapons, it may pop up and look like a play, uh, Pip-Boy, 
You know what I mean? They may do that graphically, but uh, I mean, for the most part, it would be more of a Lego game than it would be a Fallout game, but it would be aesthetically looking just like uh, Fallout, I think, if they were to do that. That makes the most sense to me as well. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. I just thought about, yeah, I was just looking, thinking about it. What would you do for stim packs? What, like, how would you integrate the fat? Well, I, I know this is just one weapon, but the fat man, because that, that it's a nuclear bomb and pretty much that might probably be inputted into like one arc or one element of the story that they put you through it might kind of introduce those yeah yeah, it might introduce those things you know what i mean and then same thing with like um like like stem packs and healing elements it might be a stem pack you might just pick it up and it only gives you a certain amount of health that isn't like you're used to as a fallout player but it'll be more along the lines of what you would get as a lego player and it might be you pick up like a whole bunch of little stim packs as you run across them, like coins, you know? Yeah. It, it might be that yeah. style of doing things. Who knows? Mm-hmm. I, what I wonder is the music, you know? I, I That was my that next would, thing. That would be an what important would, element. What, what, yeah, what, what would they do? Because cause would, they, would they continue with the 50s or I, I forget? I, I think it is the 50s, right? Yeah, I, 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 I'm a podcast host and I can't remember my own my own game's music. <laughs> That's bad on me. Uh, it's like 40s and earlier. I, I feel, yeah, yeah. I thought it was either 50s or 40s. Well, early I, 20th I, century. I think yeah. 50s would have been more like Elvis and, you know, the beginning of the Beatles and things like that. You know what I mean? I, I, I feel like Fallout was more jazz, was the more jazz era. Hmm. Uh, ragtime. I I think that was what I would call it. Yeah, yeah. Depends on the um, region you're in. Like New Vegas, there's a lot of old country and western. That is true. Lots of blues. Yeah, yeah. If you listen to the radio, radio part, music. Would there still be ambiance? Amb. You know how there's an ambiance. Yeah, the ambiance I think would still fit with Lego, but uh, yeah, I don't know the. They 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 have to have like a big band play at some point. I think it'd be cool if they went into a place and there's an actual like live big band, like of Lego characters playing on a stage. Right. <laughs> you know, guy with a saxophone and a big old boom 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 boom. You got a head growing out of your arm. I do. I do indeed. Uh, for those who don't have the benefit of our video elements. We're staring at Gingerino's child, who is... <laughs> He's right in my lap. Yeah. Gingerino's on baby duty. Yep. He's, he's got a bouncing but, little but I, And I, I'm I, still I... here, sassy and Romer. Yeah! Guys, <laughs> night. Uh, Without uh, Romer! Uh, I'm sure they have good excuses. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I feel like you, I feel like they would. Yeah, they, whatever. They do. Okay. I, I I feel I feel like this is our New Year's our New Year's wrap up. Just the three of us again. It's great. We we had fun that day, night too. Well, it was good times, man. Good times. It was it was great. So so I I feel like we've beaten the my Lego idea to a bloody pulp. <laughs> who 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 else has a game idea? What about you, Ginger? Yeah. What were you thinking of? You. See there, or did he um, souls like Fallout. Souls like Fallout. Yeah, souls like you know, Dark Souls, Bloodborne. Oh, Dark Souls, no. Bloodborne. Okay. Yeah. No, I, yes. I, no, I, I would stop playing. I'm sorry. No. I, 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 I would, I would, I would rage out. Normally, I would agree with you, but very recently, I've gotten into the genre, and I feel like a lot of the Fallout elements could be done well in a game like that. And I'd play the hell out of it. I, even if it was just something like trying to escape a super mutant infested area with, you know, and all you had was whatever melee weapons you could make from the spare parts lying around. I can hmm. see that. Okay, I can see that. It, it could be fun. I mean, like running, it would have to be in third person action RPG. So you'd be running around trying to take down enemies that are way bigger than you and these like super mutant behemoth bosses, which fit the whole dark souls feel you know big scary bosses obviously not as much magic scary people but so this is more set in the fallout world but in like a kind of a dark soulsy style of gameplay and i i don't know i feel like there's a market for it 
the aesthetic is grim and the jazz music would be hilarious i would love to play a dark souls game that's got jazz music playing the entire time yeah just like the final boss and all of a sudden you hear boom 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 <laughs> you know like the like the trumpets going nee, 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 and saxophones going yeah i i've thought it, this it, because just all upbeat <laughs> i've been playing wo long fallen dynasty since it came out on game pass and it's just how is the, it it's well it's very soulsy it's very souls like and Man, is that game punishing. It's uh the first boss sucks so much. I, it took me a week to beat one boss. Nope, no, I'm sorry. I would not have that much patience. I don't know. Yeah, I but... don't know if I'd have the patience. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, not for I wouldn't everybody, have patience right? For that in- either. I I don't know how to explain why I like it. Elden Ring just like transformed me. But anyways, uh, enough people do like it. I mean, you see how many Dark Souls runs on the internet, so there's a market. That is true. There are a ton of them out there. Yeah, I mean, well, the game genre is definitely huge. I've never been a fan. I've never really got into it. And mind you, the thing is, is I didn't really play it either. It was more of a I looking either. at the cover kind of thing and seeing how, like, the videos and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. i kind of done, been there, done that. At least it's how I felt by looking at what the game was like, because I've played so many games very similar to it, you know? And the thing is, is I get burnt out, not on games, I get burnt out on genres. Yeah. I I end up... I I can feel that. I feel that, you know? Yeah, I I totally will switch up my my gameplay to something completely different, you know? Yeah, like right right now I'm going through the sports game genre. Really? Oh, yeah, man, like... That's what you, you you switch genres depending on what you need. A Dark Souls game is basically a game where you bang your head against a wall until you win. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. My brain's just thinking Fallout jams. <laughs> mm. So how 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 would what basketball and, basketball and in in body armor? <laughs> <laughs> so what compromises would we make to make this blood the, this Dark Souls Fallout game? Uh, I think it'd have to limit a lot more of the firearms use, like to being very rare or to being some special in some way. So it'd have to be more focused, I think, on melee. There, pro- I don't know. There might be a way to implement the firearms a bit more. I, I feel like if you so just, just use pipe pistols or like, yeah, maybe there would be a way, like, to have some ranged weapon that's not very strong. Do they use mainly? Just melee weapons in Souls? Is that um, a... Yeah. I mean, most of the runs I see are melee, but no, they do have ranged options. I just, I don't Isn't remember. Like bows and arrows? Yeah, I don't remember being like particularly medieval. strong. But to be fair, I hadn't jumped in the into the genre until uh, Elden Ring, so I don't really know what the earlier entries are like. Hmm. That sounds interesting to me, because if it does have melee weapons in it, maybe it would just go with the more rudimentary element of the melee weapon as opposed to the High tech yeah. laser rifles, and you know, uh, nobody's gonna be running around with a fixer popping people off. <laughs> Something that would be pretty funny, bang. though. That'd be pretty yeah. funny, though. So, so we, what, what about the the flame sword? Oh hell yeah, that would be in the game. Or or um... the guitar swords. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the ones, that, the ah, ones that look like jokes. guitars and stuff. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Or uh, using the, uh, what was it that they used at the ski lodge? There's that one uh, weapon that's like made out of like a curved ski. It's a it's a melee weapon. It's like, like it's almost like a sword, but it's kind of like a, uh, they hooked a ski up to it with a handle. I can't remember what they, that one was, but yeah, I could see that one being used. Oh, man. So would we dumb down the final bosses or just go hardcore blood? Dark Souls and let people bang their heads on on walls. Oh right? no! If it, if you're gonna do Dark Souls style, it's gotta be hard bosses. What what yeah. would these bosses be though? I have no clue to be honest. Well, you could do like may, maybe possibly do like a, you know, make it a Mylerk. You know what I'm saying? Big you know, boss Mylerk kind of creation. Mylerk are they, are they mon- they're whatever. monsters, right? And souls. So I mean, if we're gonna do the monsters thing, I would say that. We could do like a massive like Mylerk, like the Mylerk Queen of the Castle, like you were talking about before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was saying that I 
so when the Mylar Queen, I feel like it'd be a lot harder since we didn't have any. Imagine a to... big old huge badass looking death claw though. You know Dang. what I mean? Yeah. Dude. That would be scary with just like maces and and swords. Well, if you think about it, so like the way the way that Fallout's got its kind of dark look to it. Dark Souls has got a really dark look to it as well. It's well, yeah, like, yeah. It's, from what it's I can tell from the art, sort of yeah. similar, but not. No, it's more medieval looking in the backgrounds and the color, co the the like the contrast of the colors. Some of the stuff is similar as far as the color schemes go, but it's got some richer purples and or like brighter reds and oranges to it that I think would actually look really cool with those different characters. You know what I mean? Like if we were to mix it up I, I just think a death claw would look just so wicked i think that would be yeah awesome. make that like a final right. boss yeah a Sorry death claw would look really cool hmm? uh, nobody noticed except you oh my bad <laughs> 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 yeah miss the boss is the best part uh. no, well no, we're, 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 we were talking we, about we using were a death claw about... we were death talking claw. about oh, yeah like we a death claw about as as like one and then also like the mile lurk, you know, uh, yeah, the mile lurk queen, a mile lurk queen, super mutant behemoth. Honestly, with the way the FEV, oh, we forgot works, about that one. Yeah, you you could make any kind of mutated freak. You really could. Like it doesn't have to just be the ones we've seen. If we're gonna make a new game, you can make some new monsters, right? Or you know right, what we could do? Right. Oh, I didn't even think of this. Um, the uh, centaur thing with the. Oh. Oh, that's gross! Like massive, a massive, huge, yeah, a huge centaur. What about the master? The centaur of centaurs. Yeah, <laughs> that would what be. What about cool. the master? Uh, the master's like a—he's just kind of like a big blob in a room, though. You know, what I mean, I, 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 Cause, cause we we with it being a Dark Souls, we can make him more dangerous, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in in Fallout. Yeah, he's a big blob in in. He just took up a room with a bunch of talk. monitors and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I feel like in in Dark Soul, Souls form of Fallout, we could have him have some like special attacks, some combos, you know, with those monitors or whatever, and have swords and stuff or whatever weapons we we would choose. I feel like we could make the master a lot more scarier than 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 in our our Fallout where he's just a to blob. me the master was never scary. To me, it was just grotesque. Yeah, but I mean, that's part of Dark Souls sniff, you know, yeah. it's like, ugh, gross looking monsters. Things are intimidating. Yeah, yeah so that was my idea. Hmm. My my second Shut idea up. was Fallout Guitar Hero, uh, but I didn't know how yes, else to I remember. <laughs> I remember this. Yes. I don't know how that one would go over. It wouldn't work very well. Like, I, all I could think of was like a, an all super mutant band touring around the wasteland doing ska music. <laughs> you know, though, if you think about it, you could do a type of guitar hero, and I mind you, it probably wouldn't be very difficult because of the music of the era. <laughs> you could do a guitar hero without the uh, all right. So take the whole Fallout, you know, thing out craziness okay. part of it, make it into a guitar hero game, and then you focus on the music from the game Fallout. Yeah, kind of work. You know? oh, yeah, you could totally. We, we, you get added like a saxophone, you know, like with. With like the red, the yellow, whatever saxophone colors. hero, <laughs> yeah, saxophone hero, yeah, you saxophone can or or like um, well, what what would be another instrument back then? I can't think. Or trumpet, 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 saxophone, piano, piano, other I, I, era, other jazz music, yeah, <laughs> a clarinet. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's so That's many oboe. you can crossplay. Oh man! So Sassy's not here, so I was gonna bring up Sassy's idea, and that was of Let's go with it. having Bioshock and Fallout. Ooh. But but we should put. But I think we should go to break first. You're right. Let's go to break, and then we'll come back. We'll talk about uh, Bioshock and Fallout, and then um, I'll come up with my idea, which I'll keep secret until then. We'll be back right after mm -hmm. these messages. Ever wanted to be a content creator, but had no clue where to begin? Come join me as I sit down with content creators that have already faced the challenges you're up against, as they discuss the tips and tricks that help them be successful, here on The Content Creator's Guide, available wherever podcasts can be found. 
Hello, everybody. Welcome back. How you doing? All right. So we were. Tangerino, do his thing. Remember? That's oh, okay. I'm Remember done. Scary. What the? I'm done. It's too late. The scary thing's over. Oh, the scary. It, it, it's it's like a joke. If you have to explain it, it's not funny. So done. done. Anyway, uh, so done. yeah, we're gonna go into Bioshock and the. Bioshock. Com- so I would think with Bioshock, because of the way that that game is and the way that Fallout is, you could really kind of mesh even the stories together. And Probably. So, yeah, because, uh, well, I mean, because you're dealing with kind of, even though it's a different, like, dimension, as so to speak, you could, the time frames are so similar. If you look yeah, if you at think the, about it, yeah. yeah, they're the really steampunkish kind of genre kind of elements. So, for instance, let's say you, uh, I mean, if you can have Walter and Bunny go in there and pretend to be part of the Bioshock universe, <laughs> little plug for uh, True Vault Escapades there. Um, but so let's say you grab some of the characters from Fallout and they're going to go into, um, oh God, my brain's shutting off. Um, the laboratory guys. The faction that's the institute. So let's say, yeah. So let's say they're going to go into the institute's area, right? And the institute actually has a little like hidden area. You go into that hidden area, and then it takes you under into the ocean. And all of a sudden, you find out the institute is actually also a spinoff from this faction that turns out to be this underground, underwater type of entire world that is the setting for Bioshock. And then you are, let's say you're a Brotherhood of Steel guy or whatever, or you even, you know, just anybody from the wasteland and you're going in there, or maybe it's our vault dweller, you know, and he goes down in there and he gets himself into some crazy like storyline situation where he's in the Bioshock universe, but he happens to have along with him, his weapons from Fallout, you know, and he's bringing some of that with him minus the fat boy probably, but no. What he, what he does is he sneaks out of there. He goes back into the main universe of Fallout and he brings some of his buddies with him, you know, good six or 10 of them. And then uh, maybe the battles go back and forth. Some of the Bioshock, maybe the big daddies make it to the surface and you got big daddies wandering around in the Fallout universe and that element. So you could have a cross pollinization of both games going both directions in that venue. They both would work so well. I I almost yeah. would be nervous to like if I was a developer take that on because it's so well you want to do justice to it. I just think it, it's so, it, it, but there's so much possibility there, storyline wise, yeah. game wise. I mean, because even their weapons and stuff like that. If you think about it, we've got Mentats, we got the buff out, we got those kind of drugs there. Well, they've got Stim those. Packs, yeah, they've got their own yeah. versions of those kind of drugs that do some crazy ass things on theirs. You know what I mean? Some of their stuff is just out. I mean, what was it? Telekinesis is some of the stuff you can do. You oh, know. it's insane. Yeah. I mean, they got a lot of different things you can do in that, you know, so I could see how both those games would mesh together almost seamlessly. Yeah, I would. I think I'd be more interested in seeing a Bioshock character come in into the Fallout world. Uh, yeah, I, I, Big Daddy yeah, would be can... really interesting. Yeah, I think yeah. that would, for me, it would work out better that way. I, I don't know. What about power armor? We didn't actually think about power armor, e- even for my Lego game idea. Right. Well, I was uh, now for power armor. The only thing that would be a problem with power armor is the tight, enclosed spacing inside of the Bioshock universe. You know, because yeah. the, down there it's very tight. But you got the big daddies running around down there. But I you don't know if work. they're. I don't know if they're big enough. Uh, it, it might work. I was talking about me. You, you know how how on the cover you see like the. Mariner or whatever, you know, in his jumpsuit when he goes down. I, I think it's I. I don't play a lot of Bioshock, as you can't tell, as, as you can tell. But I'm trying to think, like a different type of power armor that you could bring into the game. You know, a different looking type of power armor that's not like the XO one or any of the other ones. You can but, almost mi- do a mix mash of them both, you know, or actually uh, the Enclave armor. Yeah. The Enclave power armor would probably be pretty interesting. Or the um uh the excavator armor 
You know? Yeah. I love yeah. that stuff. That's my favorite. Yeah. The excavator armor might do really well down there, especially with its uh, different abilities that the excavator armor has on it in comparison to the uh, regular, uh, like, BOS armor. That might be cool. Yeah. Any other thoughts on uh, the Bioshock element? Are we got anything else? No, I don't, I, I don't think I, I have I see Gingerino. Else. He's sitting there pondering. I just, I feel like there's so much because they're so similar, but I can't for the life of me think of yeah, what I know to the say same, about it. Same thing is, yeah, the same thing is the same for me too, but but I'm like, if, if I can't think of anything for it, why, why would I even? Right. Well, I think it's so perfect that you almost visualize it in your head. You don't know which to pick. Yeah, you know, I, I, mean? still, I still say the the Bioshock characters coming out into the wasteland because then you can include Death Claws and Behemoths and Mirelurk stuff. Although I guess Mirelurks you could do. Uh, uh, you could do the, the Mirelurks the down Rapture. there. Too. That's oh, for sure. Oh yeah, Rapture would be like, oh look at you, Lulu. Uh, you look like you've been here all the time. Great. <laughs> now I don't want to play this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no. <sighs> Okay, so, all right, you guys ready? You ready? Hit, hit me with your best shot. Bring it. Okay. Imagine. Oh. Imagine. Now, you got to kind of picture this for a second. One, we're going to switch it back to top down, like the original oh. Fallout. Ooh, is okay. he going to go with? I think I know he's going to go with. Okay, so now. I, I think I know which one he's going to go with. Now, you guys can go ahead and let's say you got, you can create your own little Brotherhood of Steel armor, guys. You know, bunch of little power armors. And then you can build a vertebrate, and you can build a this, and you can build a that, and a thing, and a thing. and then, or let's say you're on the side of, uh, you know, um, Preston Garvey's side of things, and you can build the artillery. Oh, I'm never on his. I'm never on his side. But okay, in, but in you this get the instance, bottom. I will. Okay. Yeah. So Starcraft. Ah. I ah. Think. Yes. You grab the entire element of the top-down StarCraft element to being able to build all the different units and things like that. Now, mind you, yeah, you would have to be using a little bit of creative licensing because some of the other factions in the game of Fallout don't really have vehicles and stuff, but you can utilize other vehicles within the game itself and have it where these guys were able to get them running and working and going. And um, like the Institute, they can pretty much build new stuff. Imagine the Institute like the Protoss. Mm. If you understand how the Protoss are, they can build the pylons and they can build these, you know, um, these turrets and things like that, that they work off that. There's, you know, imagine the Institute creating their own versions of these pylon elements and they can build, you know, defensive abilities like that. And then they have the ability to also modify vehicles. Right now, mind you, right. we're dealing with nuclear power. So it might be a little more clunky looking. So imagine a steampunk version of StarCraft. And then imagine cut scenes as dynamic as Blizzard does them. So you could grab the story of Fallout and you can actually, let's say, for instance, we'll put it in the era of, of Matson, you know, of, of the original storyline of Mariposa and dealing with Matson. And he's doing his whole thing where he's going through and he goes into Mariposa and you have this cut scene and you get to see the FEV virus and the experiments going on in those areas and you know the the strife that happens and you can have those cut scenes that show all those different little things happening and you can also have it where like the alien part kind of makes its play in there where you find the ship with the aliens in it Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you, you can have cut scenes where the ghouls are talking down in the necropolis and things like that. Blizzard has always been incredibly good at doing cut scenes and movie sequences. Now, if you had those cut scenes and movie sequences added into that Fallout universe and then the ability to build your own bases and create your own, you know, units and have them going and attacking on the other sides in the Fallout universe with the music of Fallout playing in the background. And you had a radio that you can control as far as, you know, what stations you wanted. And you had missions that were just like you could put that whole map there, like everything like you could possibly have it where you could choose an Appalachian map 
or you can choose to be in New York City, or you can choose to be in this area. And those different areas and those different map locations have different storylines to follow along with it that you could actually get a little bit more uh, Fallout lore oriented out of it. You know what I mean? So if you could be going, you know, to the New York City or the, uh, was it Washington, D.C. or is it New York? Uh, Fallout 3. Fallout 3. So it's DC. So DC. yeah, so you're out there and then you got like three dog and all that going on there. And you have that storyline and the cutscenes there. And you can actually be a little bit more dynamic about it, like you know, the big robot and all that kind of stuff. You could have really Liberty cool Prime. Yeah, Liberty Prime. You can have really good, you know, visual scenes happening with that as opposed to the kind of eh cutscenes that you got with the other game, you know what I mean? Yeah, I can see that. I just I think that'd be really really cool, and then being able to incorporate all that plus you get to create some new units because you need to to make sure it's balanced. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Imagine the Raiders having like these weird like little Jeep Doom buggy things with that could like shoot rockets or whatever, or you know, kind of more of a, a Road Warrior ish kind of element to the to the Raiders. That would be awesome. They they actually have their own version of a tank that's more like a uh like a like a trebuchet or a catapult off the top of the um the tank as opposed to like an actual boom you know <laughs> I think that would be cool as hell. It it'd be cool just to see vehicles in Fallout in general. Oh yeah, oh yeah, totally. Yeah, it's like just the ability to be able to utilize that, and then having troops that were like power armored troops, or you could use. Um, recon, you know, units from, um, I don't know why I, my brain is not, not the, what was Preston Garvey's group called? The Minutemen. Yeah, there you go. So the Minutemen, you know, you got the Minutemen and they were like, imagine them actually having horseback, you know, <laughs> utilizing horses or something. <laughs> <laughs> right, cool. riding on mile lurks with like rocket launchers or something. I don't know, but <laughs> I I just think that there's so much that they could do with that that it would really make it really cool, really interesting. I'd like to know other people's opinions on that actually, because I I always I always like looked at Fallout One and Two and stuff like that, and I'm like, you know, these games for their time they were really cool, but if people still like really enjoyed that top down element. I think that if they were to incorporate something more StarCraft-ish, because you remember StarCraft tried to do the other, the complete opposite. That's where you get uh, Overwatch and stuff like that from. You know, it's because they wanted to see how they could grab the StarCraft universe and kind of put it in that first-person shooter element, which yeah. could have done so much better. And again, there you go. Is Imagine the Fallout universe, and then from that Fallout universe... All of a sudden, instead of those aliens that we got, let's say the Protoss landed or the Zerg. You imagine the Zerg going up against the Brotherhood of Steel, and then the Terrans come along and find out that the Terrans were actually just humans that left Earth, you know, centuries ago before we actually even got technology. And then the only ones that were left on Earth ended up just being a few stray humans, and they kind of rebuilt the entire world from when the Terrans left Earth and now they're back, you know, fighting against the Protoss in the Fallout universe, in the Fallout, you know, environment, they all had nuclear power and like, here comes the Terrans going, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> you <know? laughs> I'm going to be honest. I've never played Starcraft. Really? Oh, you're missing out. Um, have you ever played Warcraft, the original game? No, I missed out on all of those games, to be honest. Age of Empires? Nope, I, I'm serious. I missed out on all those RTS-style games. What is Age of, uh, of the game that you do the other podcast for, Eora? Um, Pillars of Eternity. That's kind of top-down RPG. So it's not quite the same? Like, it's like my, the, one I, the one I do a podcast on is uh, kind of like Baldur's Gate style, that kind of thing. Okay, all right. So it's not like building units and no, know, it's not like I mean, I'm familiar with StarCraft. My brother-in-law loves StarCraft. So I'm familiar right. with it, but the, like to understand how the stories would mix, but I could definitely see the two games mixing well. Uh as for the lore though, I just like but I I mean, I'd be, I'd play that cuz I mean, even Halo did that, right? With Halo Wars. Yeah. They, yeah. they moved into yeah. the PS yeah. could totally do it. Yeah. 
There's another game that he could probably get away with doing something like that. I don't know. Yeah, Halo's, uh... <laughs> Halo's so advanced, though. Like, it, the advanced technology and elements on Halo would be like, they would drop down here and be like, there you go. Super Start Mutant, later. Although, Dude, I would love was... to play as Master Chief just wrecking the Commonwealth. Let's be honest. Oh, yeah. Goodness. Yes. Master, I, Master Chief, there would be nothing in the Fallout universe that would compete with him. But it would be fun. <laughs> he would It'd just really whoop fun. everything's butt, man. Yeah. It's like that <laughs> the queen. He'd be like, it's a bug. Stink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their weapons were way more advanced. I just don't see him having actually his pistol Hollywood <laughs> took it out. <laughs> there you go. Pistol only run, Master Chief in the in Capital Wasteland. <laughs> there you go. That would be cool. <laughs> Starcraft, good choice. I thought for some reason when you were first describing it, I thought you were going to say The Sims, like the Fallout Sims. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Which <laughs> would also work, that, but still like, ooh. I wouldn't, nah. That would be what um what the kids call today cringe. Yeah, well, a, little <laughs> bit, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, a little bit of it, cringe. Now, yeah. one one thing I have, I'm surprised I haven't seen kind of in, in like actual play is... um. A Bethesda esque in Fortnite because they've licensed everything in Fortnite, but they haven't done. Anything I feel like they've related. licensed. They've licensed like everything else, but not they haven't done it in Fortnite yet. And I'm surprised nope. that you can't get like a a Deathclaw skin in Fortnite. Anyway, sorry, I took away from your StarCraft. Huh? No, well, I mean, I, I was gonna start. I was gonna put it to you guys on your opinions, but if you have never played StarCraft. It kind of takes you out of the element. It's just you know, understanding the game genre is kind of where I was going with it, though. Is yeah. less about the genre. The... I get. I I just don't yeah. know the story behind Star Starcraft and all the lore. But the right, story, right. The RTS genre. I get that. And yeah, that would so, play so well for Fallout. I, I well, I think so. I mean, like I was telling him, you know, imagine raiders with like little doom buggies and stuff that shoot rockets. Hell yeah. Or or uh, uh, a uh, I was talking about a tank with like a trebuchet on top. <laughs> oh, dude, I would pl I would totally play as the Raiders. The the like everything's just kind of junkyard smashed together, right? You know what I mean. Um, Whatever they can come up with, <laughs> I know, yeah. It all the factions could you could make something out of it, and I, Mike, actually Mike, that'd be a great creative challenge for a developer to see yeah. how they can make those or the super mutants. You know, what I mean, it, <laughs> what would the super mutant vehicle be? Yeah, it would have to like... be just like a giant dog or send. Well, I was thinking more like Fred Flintstone in like <laughs> they just. <laughs> Running around, <laughs> it's got wheels on it. Grab the car, okay. <laughs> they just hold it around. <laughs> run. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Uh, dude, I could just make. I, I would make that part just funny somehow. I would have to. <laughs> I would, it would yeah. It, I it, want it, this to instead happen of them, now. instead of them using the cars. And using the cars and like you know having like weapons on the cars, they just grab the cars and throw them. <laughs> You're actually really selling this on me. I really yeah. wish this was a thing. <laughs> I thought about this for a while. I was like, you know, this would be really cool it as would a game. Work so well. Oh, yeah. It would work out so well. Well, I mean, just because you could grab so many things, like the railroad guys. Imagine using the railroad, and if you think about it. Um, uh, mind you, it's not a great subject for you know some people, but the Nazis put like artillery on the like railroads and used the heavy cannons on the railroad. You can imagine the railroad that you could like kind of anywhere the railroads kind of travel. There's a lot of area in the Fallout universe where the railroad goes. Imagine having artillery barrage in any direction of that area, you know, where the the uh, trains can go. That would be pretty interesting. Not only that, but imagine if the guys from the railroads actually hooked up with the boomers from the um, airport and they got together. And they were actually able to get an airplane in the air. From Ellis or whatever. I feel like infiltrating the boomer headquarters would just alone be a great mission for a game like that. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like who could get to the airplanes first? Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Air superiority. I've always wanted... I always one. wanted like more airplanes, like actual airplanes, not like not like vertebrates. Yeah, vertebrates are dumb. 
Well, to me, the vertebrates are just helicopters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I'm Might saying. Might as well just be a black I, I, want, I want a I want a legit airplane. A bomber. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. Of course, with the nuke element, it's like, and then so if you for those that do know about Starcraft, you've got Kerrigan. Kerrigan is somebody who can actually boom, with her rifle pinpoint a location and drop a nuke anywhere she wants to right. until she gets caught, obviously. And she also has the ability to cloak. Now, if you were able to utilize that in which are the character called a ghost. Now, if you had those characters in the Fallout universe that is teeming with nuclear bombs, just saying, you know, it's a thing. Could be, could be pretty cool. Even if you didn't combine StarCraft with it, the whole concept of the top-down RTS strategy game in a Fallout universe element, I think would be a yeah, it'd be money. Well. Didn't they do uh, something similar? Like they did tactics or whatever, but tactics is tactics is, is not cameras. No, yeah, it's, well, tactics yeah. is also not not that. It's not you know, it's not a, a, a true art. I thought I thought, I thought I thought that was a top down though. It, it well, it's asymmetric, but I mean, so are the first two, and they're not RTSs. Yeah, that, no. that is true. That is no, true. Th this isn't like where you're building units and you're compiling an army. You take that army and you go conquer a location. It's not. So that you're way. saying so. So you're saying more strategic. That's what RTS means. Yeah, that's true. Real time yeah. strategy, there, boyo. Just saying. Yep. 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 I'd buy it. One hundred percent. Okay. Well, is there any other ideas you guys got in your noodles? Um, boomer shooter, you know, take good old Doom style. Yeah, and, Doom uh, dis just just Doomify Fallout. I'd play that to death. That would be great. Just have it where you just go in crazy shooting. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. like that. That would be the same as when you get trapped inside the um the subway area in Fallout. Yeah. Honestly, do it like the, the uh, Wolfenstein 3D where you're trying to escape from the Nazi prison, but in this one, you're trying to escape from a subway. Yeah, I could see that. Ooh, actually, escaping from a subway, you could do a good Metroidvania that way. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we could. Hmm. Oh, man, there's so many. There's so many great opportunities for crossovers. I feel, I, I feel like we should do a part two. Like, like a, like a, I, don't know, I don't know if we get a part two out of it, but there's so many good ideas. Me, me, I mean, like when when the when the other guys come back, we do we do this again on different. Yeah, well, we can always definitely mix it up with some. Yeah, yeah. All right, because well, we got great ideas. This is we out of our little noggins, we can't. Well, and I would love to know what our listeners have in mind because I'm sure they got plenty of games also, out there. They're going, no, 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 this game, this game. You know, well, yeah, but, Spyro the Dragon. <laughs> Spyro. <laughs> Dragon Age. Crash Bat. <laughs> Yeah, Crash man. Bandicoot, Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> I, okay, actually though, Grand I Theft would... Auto. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto in Fallout? Are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> that would be an awesome game, though. Oh man, yeah. Or no. yeah, a Seven know. Days to Die version where it's ghouls. Every time the the Ooh. night falls, you get attacked Ooh. by ghouls and death claws. I like that. That'd be cool. I like that. Seven they come days, at you like yeah. yeah. You'd have to build up like a base that they can't get to, and then like it'd have to be able to hold them off until daylight. And you got like rabid, crazy, glowing ghouls coming after you, and mm -hmm. death claws and everything else trying to like, just smash your stuff up. That would be interesting. Mm. Yeah. All right. Anyway. All right, folks. That's going to do it for us tonight. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Uh, everybody say good night. Say good night. Good morning. Good night. Okay. Good morning. Good night. Fine. He just has yeah. to be different. This oh, is send, send, us like, emails on what, send us emails on crossover ideas for games that you have. Follow RTB or, or Twitter. Or Twitter if you can fit 140 characters. At follow <laughs> Yes. Yes. Hey, did you notice the Twitter guy's beak is now open instead of closed? I never noticed. I did it. notice that. Is this I a noticed it thing? last week. I think so. I think it's a you know this is a freedom of speech thing. You know. Ooh. <laughs> I noticed it last week. Met metaphor. Layers upon layers. All right. Anyway, metaphor. good night, folks. Have a great night. Bye bye.
Bye bye. This podcast is part of the Robots Radio Rocket Club, a program designed to help all podcasts reach their full potential. For information about joining the Robots Radio Rocket Club, check out robotsradio.net.